Correct. You got anything else to say, Ms. Burks? No. That's 300 days. Good morning, Ms. Burks. Good morning. This woman is Ebony Beck. She is charged with misdemeanor assault and misdemeanor domestic violence against her grandfather and his companion. In the court hearing, the judge asked to say how she wants to plead. You have three pleas available to you today. Guilty, not guilty, no contest. What plea would you enter? I'm not guilty. After she chooses to plead not guilty, the judge then sets a bond of $1,500 for the two charges. Ebony appears to have no issue with the bond, but what the judge says next doesn't seem to sit well with her. No contact means you can't call him, you can't write him, you can't text him, you can't email him, you can't leave uh, a message on some social media, you can't go visit him. If you go someplace, even though you may have arrived first and one of them shows up, you have to leave. So you gonna tell me I can't go home? I'm telling you, you can't go home. Things are about to get heated. If you live with Mr. McRae, you cannot return to that residence. Oh, but how are you just gonna tell me I can't go home though? What? How are you gonna tell me I can't go to my house? I just did. Ebony's frustration is understandable. She lives in the same house with the very people she's been wanting to have no contact with. I mean, where else is she supposed to live? That's her home. However, the charges, which stems from what she is believed to have done to her grandfather and his companion, puts her in this predicament or situation. How are you going to tell me I can't go to my house? I just did. Well, I bet I do. While her frustration is understandable, considering the fact that she lives in that same house, she is still expected to comply with the law and find a temporary place to stay for the meantime. It hasn't been determined yet whether she is indeed guilty or not, but she may. Also, per the judge's actions, there's likely some considerable amount of evidence that points to her being guilty. So she should take responsibility and find ways to solve them instead of being stubborn. A better approach would have been for her to work with her lawyer to propose reasonable solutions, like requesting a modified no-contact order, so she can retrieve her belongings or find a new place to stay. But no, Ebony is about to make her case even worse. Well then, you're, you're in contempt, young lady, and you've got 30 days, so you're not Bye. going... You're not, what? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Get back, get back. Get, get back. Get back. Get back. That's another 30 days. That's 60 days. So what? 90 days. So? That's a big no-no. She's been disrespectful to the judge who holds a lot of power here. All she had to do was cooperate. But see how she's digging her own grave. 120 days. Okay, and? 180 days. Whoa. Please, quiet. Get off, get off me! Get your hands off me, man! What else you got to say? Yep, yeah, at this point, she's got to pay for a defiant, unreasonable behavior. But what she said next only was in her case. Nothing. We'll talk in six months when you're ready to come Bye. back for your case. I got money. That's 200 days. You got anything else to say, Miss Burks? No. That's 300 days! However, Although she got 300 days in jail for contempt of court, which is actually the longest sentence the judge has ever given for contempt of court, she only ended up serving 88 days. As for the original charges, they were suspended and she was forced into a rehab program. The lesson here is that when you are in legal trouble, it's best to stay calm, cooperate with the court, and work within the system to find lawful solution, even if it's inconvenient. Defiance and disrespect rarely lead to good outcomes. The court is not a place where you can simply speak or behave however you wish. In a courtroom, you must abide by the guidelines and instructions set forth by the judge. The courtroom has specific rules and protocols that everyone present must respect and comply with. Sorry, Ron. Not as sorry as she's going to be.